What better way to test the limits of new technology than by trying to break a land speed record? Since the early 90s, students here at CAR have been racing electric and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles as part of their research. Let's take a look at the small but dedicated team behind the Buckeye Bullet 2. Bonneville is a unique experience. Uh, I suppose that doesn't quite rank up with landing on the moon, but it's close. The Bonneville Salt Flats, when you get out there, it feels like an alien planet. Just about everybody, the first time they set foot out on the salt, they think they're on another planet. It really is strange to see, especially in August, it's you know over 100 degrees most days, but it looks like you're covered in snow. The idea that a team of students uh, could actually build uh, a, an, an electric land speed record vehicle, go out to Bonneville and in a couple of years, not just surpass, but shatter the existing uh, land speed record is a one of a kind thing. My name is Kimberly Stevens. My name is Isaac Harper. My name is Kevin Ponziani. And I do aerodynamic design for the Buckeye Bullet 2. I'm a student at The Ohio State University in mechanical engineering. And I work on the electronics and controls for the Buckeye Bullet 2. I'm the team leader of the Buckeye Bullet. The team is comprised of mostly engineers, aerospace, electrical, mechanical, welding. Ohio State has a huge college of engineering comprising many majors, and we pull a lot of students from a lot of different majors. We started the construction of the Bullet 2 this past winter. The students all stayed, gave up their winter break, and constructed the chassis in 10 days. In January, we worked on building the wind tunnel model to validate all of our CFD testing, did a lot of motor testing in Pennsylvania, completed the design of the suspension, came back by the end of June, started assembling the car. We had our first road mile uh, mid-July. Gas on. Green start button. Start on. Push team. Push. Green start push. Good for high voltage. Good for high voltage. Everything going good. 80 miles an hour. The Center for Automotive Research is an interdisciplinary center in the College of Engineering. We do research and education in all aspects of automotive engineering, and in particular, we've been involved in electric and hybrid electric vehicle development and education since the early 1990s. Racing a, an open wheel, single-seater race car, our team ended up winning all three of the national championships in the Formula Lightning electric race series. And the students were excited about uh, continuing their programs with electric racing, and they they came up with the idea alongside with a sponsor to build a battery powered land speed record car. So we sat down and uh, started designing a vehicle that was designed to go 300 plus miles an hour. And by 2004 we had actually accomplished our record setting uh, uh, the US uh, EV land speed record at almost 315 miles per hour. After we set our records in October of 2004, we really wanted to take the next step. The car had been designed to go 300 and it went 321, you know, so we were already pushing the, the design limits of the car. So we looked for something new with Buckeye Bullet 2, and kind of the natural evolution, especially with the way the auto industry is going, was to look to hydrogen fuel cells. Alternative energies is sort of a new field for, for land speed racing, and uh, even all of the car guys out there are, are really interested in what we're doing just because it's, it's a whole new way of doing what they've been doing for decades upon decades. We came out to Bonneville in August with a lot of work ahead of us. Um, things, some things hadn't been assembled yet. We still had a lot of work to do. So we spent the first couple of days at Bonneville actually passing tech inspection and you know doing the last finishing touches on the car to get it absolutely race ready. run out at Bonneville, you can't just bring your car and go 300 miles an hour. And they want to make sure that your car is safe to run on the salt flats by their standards. They want the car to step through the speeds and, and make sure that it's uh, mechanically safe. So the first run we did, they told us to go 150 and you know Roger went 149. Once you've passed technical inspection, then they want to make you slowly bump up your speeds. So they'll start you out maybe at 150 miles an hour and then they'll say, okay, you've gone 150, now try 175. Once you've gone 200 miles an hour, they allow you to run on the long course, which in fact we finally did by surpassing 200 miles an hour, which meant that when we came out in October, we were already qualified and ready to go on the long course to start going really fast. 
Yeah, right now the driver is taping his uh, earphones into his ears, and then he'll be getting into the cockpit. They'll get him fastened in with a seven-point harness. He's also got his head restrainer, and he's got ISP head restraints molded around the roll cage of the vehicle. So when the driver's tucked in there, he he's almost becomes part of the vehicle. Uh, he's only going to run down to the three-mile marker. If we see a rooster tail, we know he's making some pretty good speed. And I feel that we accomplished our goal. Um, we went over 200 miles an hour. Uh, we learned a lot. It was time to pack up and go home. Actually, that 201 mile an hour run was the very last run, not only for us, but of the entire meet. Um, we were the very last car to take off, so there really wasn't anything else we could do after 201 except pack up, um, come home, make some changes, get the car ready to go back out in October.